Welcome to our lecture online. In this video, we're going to take a sample and then infer something about the population. So here's the example. We're going to find the level of confidence that the mean of the sample falls between the mean of the population minus one unit and the mean of the population plus one unit. What does that mean, plus and minus one unit? Well, let's say that the, the mean is in miles and let's say that the average uh, or the mean of the sample is 10 miles and so therefore you're looking to see uh, what the level of confidence is that when you take 10 miles here that it falls somewhere between the mean of the population minus 1 and the mean of the population plus 1. For example, 10 minus 1 is 9 and 10 plus 1 would be 11. So as an example. All right. There's two steps we need to take. First, we need to find the z-value or the z-score. In, in essence, we want to find the t-score, the, the test statistic, because we're dealing with the size of the sample. And then we want to find the confidence level after that. Now, typically, there's two things you wouldn't know about the population. One is you don't know the mean of the population. And the second is you don't know the standard deviation of the population. But that's an extra added step that we're going to learn in the next series of videos on the next chapter. What we're going to do instead here is we're going to assume that we know the standard deviation of the population. So it's kind of a, um, a little bit of cheating, so to speak, for now to make it a little bit easier. We'll worry about how to do that later when we do the whole, the whole uh, estimate. And so what we're going to do here is also compare the standard deviation of the sample to the standard deviation of the population by saying that it's equal to the standard deviation of population divided by the square root of the sample size. So in this case, if we assume that the standard deviation is 6, which is a given now, we divide that by the square root of the sample size, which is given to be 100. So we get 0.6 for the standard deviation of the sample. All right. So first, what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the test statistic right here. So step one, and we're going to take the mean of the sample. But remember that the mean of the sample could vary from the mean of the population minus one to the mean of the population plus one. So let's take the upper limit. Let's go the mean of the population plus one as the upper limit of the of what we would call the um, sample mean and we're going to subtract from that the population mean divided by the standard deviation and multiply that times the square root of the sample size so now that becomes mu plus one minus mu so that would be the what we call the mean of the population plus one minus the mean of the population divided by the standard deviation which we set was equal to six and then we're going to multiply that times the square root of the sample size, which is 100. So this becomes equal to these cancel out. So we have 1 over 6 times 10, which is 10 divided by 6, which is 1.67, I believe, isn't it? So that would be 1.67. Uh, make sure I do that right. 10 divided by 6, sure it is, 1.67. All right. So that gives us a z-score, so to speak, or the test statistics, which we can then use a table for to find what that's equivalent on the table. So if z is equal to 1.67 on the table, that corresponds to a value. I got to find my table here. There it is. There's my table. 1.667. All right. 1.667. Six, seven. Uh, I would say that somewhere around 0 0.4516, 6, 0 0.4516, 0 0.4516. So it'd be 0 0.4516 or 45.16 percent. Now, of course, that corresponds to going to the upper limit. If we now were to do the same for the lower limit, so for the lower limit, we end up with the population mean minus 1 minus the population mean divided by 
sigma times the square root of n. So now we do it on the other side. Remember, we did the upper limit. Now we do the lower limit. And so that gives me um, minus 1 divided by 6 times the square root of 100, which is minus 1 divided by 6 times 10, or minus 1.67. So now we have the negative of that value, so when we look up on the table, then we get uh, z is equal to one point, uh, negative 1.67. And of course, you get the very same result, but on the negative side. So that gives us also a 0 0.4516, which is equal to 45.16%. So what we did here is to find the confidence interval and this is mu, so we found this interval on the right side, which we said was 45.16%, and we found the interval on the left side, which was also 45.16%. That should be a 5 right here. There we go. And so if we add the two together, so total, we end up with 45.16%, plus 45.16 percent that gives us equal to 90.32 percent so what does this mean how do we interpret this well we were looking for the level of confidence we have a level of confidence of slightly over 90 percent that if we do a random sample of a hundred a random sample size of a hundred and we want to infer something about the mean of the population, we can say that the mean of, mean of the population will fall somewhere between the mean of the sample plus 1 and the mean of the sample minus 1. And we have 90.32% probability or confidence level that that's indeed the case. So, how do we interpret that? Well, that interprets us that we have if you go mu plus 1, so we go mu plus 1 and mu minus 1, that we have a 90.32% probability that the mean of the population falls somewhere between the mean of the, uh, the, mean of the sample plus 1 and the mean of the sample minus 1. So did I express that the correct way here? Let's take a look here. The comes level because I don't want to confuse you. I'm actually confusing myself a little bit, but let me take a look here. And, um, ah, yeah, so essentially what we're saying is that the sample of the, the mean of the sample will fall somewhere, indicate that we're somewhere between this particular range. And you know what? Let me think about this for a minute. I'll come right back. <laughs> Ah, uh, yes. <clears throat> okay. All right. I have to think about this one for a moment because it kind of seems backwards, right? We're getting, we're getting a sample. We find out what the mean of the sample is, and then we want to infer something about the mean of the population. And so when we write this statement right here, and this is the key statement right here, is that we want to find the confidence level, the level of confidence that the mean of the sample is less than or equal to the mean of the population plus one or that it's greater than or equal to the mean of the population minus one so, then coming back over here. so how should we interpret that because it's a little bit hard to get a, uh, a feel around that but it's better to represent this with numbers so let's say for a moment that the population mean is 10 and so 10 plus 1 makes this 11 and 10 minus 1 makes this 9. So what we're saying here is that we found the level of confidence of 90.32%, let's just call it 90%, we're 90% confident that the sample mean falls, the sample mean will fall between 9 and 11 if the population mean is equal to 10. So in other words, the sample mean says that we can be 10% higher and 10% lower from the population mean, and we can say that with 90% confidence. So with 90% confidence, we can say that the sample mean falls somewhere between uh, 
the population mean minus 10% and the population mean plus 10%. In this particular example, it'll be 10 plus 1 and 10 minus 1 uh, with the numbers that we used. And so we have this 90% confidence level that our sample mean falls somewhere in that range. The reason why it's kind of convoluted in thinking about this way is because essentially we know what this value was and we're trying to infer what the the population mean is and so the explanation is kind of a little bit backwards but that's the way it is done in statistics so we get the confidence the percentage confidence level that the sample mean falls somewhere between the population mean plus one and the population mean minus one that's probably the best way to think about it so that's how we interpret the result of that confidence level <laughs> I don't like it, but that's the best we can do. I think we need to show some more examples. <laughs>